Good morning to all the students. First of all, I have to say, Happy Father's Day. How many of you are fathers? And then, so today, what we are meant to say, it is because of our fathers, okay? They have done their day, they have sacrificed their whole life for us. It's a very appropriate time. And uh, I wish you Happy Father's Day. I wish you all the best. And then now, we have an excellent, uh, I, I mean, the topic for the day, career opportunities for the accounting and finance people. There are many jobs, you know, they call it as a future is your accounts and finance. And it is for all the ages, the jobs are available. But how do we get the training? And then what are the various jobs, I mean, jobs available so he's going to explain. And our uh, speaker, CMA Vijay Kiran Garu, he's, uh, he's going to take up this topic. I have, I'm very happy to introduce him. Sri Vijay Kiran Agastya is a cost, cost and management accountant from Institute of Cost, and, cost Accountants of India. He holds a bachelor's degree in commerce from Osmania University and professional degrees from ACCA UK and CIMA UK. He co-founded NextGen uh, Learning and Consulting Private Limited, a skill development organization focused on enhancing employability skills among young graduates. He is also a management consultant, consultant serving various startup companies. He worked in the corporate for 20 years where he last served as vice president global finance at Deloitte USA operations. He held managerial leadership roles for more than 15 years at Deloitte and Genpact. During his corporate tenure, he led several high impact projects in finance and transformation, fast efficiency, new technology implementation, among others. He is presently the secretary to, to the uh, Southern Indian Regional Council of Institute of Cost Accountants of India, 2021 and 22. He has previously held the position of chairman of Hyderabad chapter of cost accountants in the year 2015 and 16. Presently, he is also a member of faculty of commerce, Osmania University and uh, uh, Osmania University and member IQAC at Andhra Mahila Sabha Arts and Science College for Women. He is a passionate trainer with over 20 years experience in teaching various professional accounting courses. He delivered more than 500 guest talks, lectures in colleges. He is a certified trainer, trainer that is Triple T from two multinational organizations where he facilitated Manager Academy, Lean and uh, Six Sigma, Business Chemistry and other soft skill programs. So now I'm introducing the speaker, CMA Vijay Kiran Garu. Sir, now the session is handed over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining today's session. Um, as, as we know, the topic is, what are the career opportunities for finance and accounting professionals? Uh, what I would like to do today is um, not only talk about what are the in-demand finance and accounting jobs, but before that, I want to spend a few minutes to talk about how do you choose the right career path and why it is important to make a, the right career choices. Um, there's a simple method that I'll introduce to you. You can perhaps spend some time pondering about, um, you know, how you will effectively use this method. And uh, obviously the key topic for the day is the in-demand finance and accounting jobs. My idea is not to tell you what jobs are available. I mean, Google does that better than me. So my idea is to, um, you know, 
share some perspective about what these jobs uh, are and what could be the skills that are required for these jobs so that's that's the whole intent um, you know rather than trying to showcase you what uh, job opportunities you have right so um how how do you choose the right career path right i think this is this is uh, the most important question uh, for all of us um, I know some of you are pursuing, uh, you know, accounting courses um, or diplomas at uh, the Institute of Practical Accountancy. Um, uh, but I think what some of us might still have in mind is, you know, where do I go next after this, right? And um, in the corporate, I have noticed uh, uh, for the 20 years that I spent in the corporate that I noticed that even after they get into an employment, people are still thinking about um, what is the right career path for me. I got into accounting or I got into uh, technology or I got into marketing or whatever. In the first one to three years, sometimes even a little bit longer than that, people are still um, not very sure if they got into the right career path and then they're still, you know, considering changing career path. Sometimes this happens, uh, you know, after 10 years of work experience also or later. And the, the reason for some of that is we may not have spent enough time thinking through um, what is the right career path for us. We would have got carried away either by, you know, an opportunity itself or the money involved in the opportunity or at the early stage in our career, sometimes we pick up a career choice just because our friends are also doing the same thing, right? Uh, but eventually, um, you know, getting getting uh, stuck in a career that you are not really enjoying, right? I often ask, uh, you know, um, students, uh, you know, one thing when you um, when you make uh, when you go to a a wedding or a birthday party let's say there is a buffet in front of you right some of your friends some of your friends um, you know are perhaps eating a particular dish there right um, do you also simply because your friends are eating that dish pick up the same dish or do you go around the buffet and figure out what you like the most right nine out of ten times we don't pick up the food in a buffet just because our friends picked it up, but we pick it up because we like it, right? So when we, when we have our independence in deciding what food we would like to eat or what beverage we would like to drink, isn't it important that we make our own career choices rather than asking somebody to make a choice for us? So one distinction let me make here is you can always take advice from people. You can always ask suggestions. You can always ask pros and cons of a particular career path, especially those who are already in that field should be able to give us a very good perspective of what are the advantages and disadvantages of, um, you know, choosing that particular career path. Uh, but the choice should be made by the candidates. Right. Again, I repeat this. If we want to make a choice for the beverage that we drink, for the food that we eat, why don't we make our own choice of the career? After all, it is our career and those who gave advices are not going to live that career for you. We have to uh, uh, live that career for ourselves. Right. The advisors are only there to guide us. So that's my first uh, you know, point. The other thing that I want you all to note is, you know, we spend about one third of our life in um, in our work at our workplace, right? Uh, a twenty-four hour day typically might have eight hours, you know, spent on sleep, eight hours probably on our um, our lives, right? Our personal lives, whatever. The remaining eight hours, almost one third of our life is being spent at work. Right, so it's very important that we are we are happy at our work as well, right? Because that is that could potentially impact the rest of the life. If we are not happy at work, 
if we are not enjoying what we do right if we are not feeling passionate about the work that we do it doesn't you know help us you know in our overall life so if one third of our life um, you know is at work we rather make the right career choices before ending up at work let me ask a question and you can perhaps use the chat box to answer this um there's a global survey that was rolled out uh, to check with employees how many people are happy uh, with their work with their careers right can you guess what percentage of people said that they are happy you can use the chat box to put the numbers up there so there's a i'm repeating the question there's a global survey that was rolled out and people were asked this question what how many of you are happy right and they converted the results into a percentage to arrive at a percentage happy people in their jobs okay and this is a global survey obviously a sample not a whole population survey so can you guess what is the percentage of people who said that they are happy with their work i want you to put that number in the chat box somebody said it's 35% 50% I think forty percent. Okay. Any other guesses? Why do you think so many people are unhappy? Twenty percent. Okay. Any other guesses? The simple thing, right? You just put up a number. That don't worry. There's no nothing that we are going to lose with that. okay so thank you for uh, participating so the survey said the survey said let me show you this let me know once you are able to see the screen are you able to see the screen so so the survey said i think whoever said 20% i think is the closest only 13% people enjoy their job that's so unfortunate right that's so unfortunate that's very low right so i think part of this is because we didn't spend enough time obviously choices are one thing right not everywhere in the world not in every economy um in the present day that everyone has a choice to pick up their career right fortunately for us we have a choice in india at least in the current scenario we have an opportunity to make our career choice there are many other countries where they don't have an opportunity right um they have to just do what has been uh, you know given to them right so we have an opportunity to make a choice so we better utilize that opportunity again i am going back let us not make career choices based on our friends um, you know choice based on our relatives choice or based on somebody else's choice they are there to advise us but the choice has to be made by us right so that's that's the important thing that i would like to drive home now before we go to the um, you know other aspects let me give you a simple model that somebody can utilize in making a career choice right we may we may be thinking so how do i decide how do i decide what is the best thing for me okay so there is this simple model called vista model i learned it when i was uh, um volunteering for uh, you know a a us based organization that was helping underprivileged students uh, you know regard you know, with respect to their career with respect to their career choices again the topic was the same right so the model is called vista what it says is whenever you are making a career choice whatever job you are picking up you look at these five factors and see how many of these five factors meet number 1 does the job or career option fit your value mechanism 
right does the job or career fit your value system i'll give you one example not so great one that i experienced very early in my career i think i um i was about 23 or 24 at that time uh, two and a half three years of work experience i was interviewed by um, i can't take the name a real estate company those days okay and typically those days there were not so many multinational jobs jobs in different shifts etc typically jobs used to be in a regular shift of 9 am to 6 pm um and then obviously you know in finance and accounting there could be that we work longer hours because of audits quarter closes tax audit statutory audit and what not but this particular company said we don't start the office at 9 am we start around 12 o'clock and we work till 9 o'clock in the night and it could go a little bit longer and then they told me um you know part of it is because the the directors of the company they tend to stay late they wake up late and they come here and then uh, you know i'm being very honest and uh, blunt here they also said occasionally the directors could use abusive language and you have to bear with it right somehow i felt it doesn't fit in my value mechanism right because whatever is your job whatever job that you are doing whoever is heading the organization irrespective of what levels at which they are there has to be a mutual respect there has to be respect for each other and if they tell me that you know there is not that respect for each other somehow it did not fit my bill right somehow it did not fit my value mechanism so i decided not to pursue that um, opportunity someone else might say it's okay i'm fine i can handle this i know how to handle this and um, you know i'm fine with this type of work culture so what we need to figure out is what are our values right what is our belief system and is the job or career opportunity fitting our value system fitting our belief system i think that's a very very important uh, parameter for us to choose a career option or to choose a job opportunity second most important thing is are we really interested in that job opportunity are we really interested to pursue that type of career opportunity right um so um you know this 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 definition of how do we how do we decide where whether we are interested in something or not how do we decide whether we are passionate about something or not a very simple simple rule is any time we perform an activity we feel excited about it that tells whether we are interested in it or not. any activity that we, we we get involved in if it stresses us if it um if it uh, creates stress in our mind or if it creates um you know confusion chaos and uncomfortable uh, you know um, scenarios for us that means we are really not interested that means we are really not passionate about it right so that's that's a key thing for us to um, identify are we feeling excited are we feeling energized to doing something or are we feeling low or are we feeling stressed out by doing something that's the number one indicator of whether we have an interest in something or not i'm sure generally we are not cons- you know confused with whether we are interested in something or not but this is how we need to evaluate sometimes our interest could be based on somebody who's brainwashed us that this is interest right i don't think we should go with that we should on our own check by performing this activity by performing this um, you know job am i feeling excited or am i feeling stressed is my energy level going up or is my energy level going down right so for example for me one of the most passionate area is to teach right even if i am stressed on a particular day for different reasons even if i have many things going on in my life even if i am very busy if i get an opportunity to teach at the end of it i feel excited at the end of it i feel energized at the end of it i feel elated that okay i made possibly some difference to somebody's life or career 
so that kind of excites me so that is my interest right so when you pick up your jobs you need to check whether you are really interested in that career or you got influenced by somebody's brainwashing or you got influenced by somebody else's choices um, you know in the decision the third aspect is we need to figure out whether this job fits our strengths or not see we are all different human beings we are not all the same every one of us is different each one of us have different strengths there is no human being in this world who doesn't have any strength let me say that there is i'm repeating this there is no human being in this world who doesn't have strengths each of us will have different strengths and every job requires us to possess certain qualities so it's very important for us to check whether our strengths match that quality or not i'll give you an example i think we were discussing informally before the um program started about customer service in some of the western countries where they are so pleasing to the customers where they treat you so nicely um uh, where they show a lot of patience in handling you etc so let's pick up one example call centers right um, let me stop the screen share for a minute and let me ask this question if you are working in a call center right you know how call centers are right or you know how these uh, um telecallers or telemarketing people are they call up people they are trying to sell a product or if it is a call center somebody is calling them up for a query or whatever right you know how these are right every day you get a call from certain certain bank certain certain insurance company some real estate company to sell lands etc how how do you react to them right sometimes you get irritated sometimes you get frustrated you you could even yell at them right so now let's step into the shoes of the person who is in the call center for a minute and i want you to use the chat box to say if you are in a call center or if you are a telemarketer what are the skills that you should possess what are the key skills that you should possess what should be your strong areas what sh what should be your strengths use the chat box to share your thoughts please anyone anyone can just share their perspective there so i got one one answer very good patience they need to have patience very good what else good communication skills and good speaking skills absolutely they need to be polite very nice very nice so these these are very good points right if you are working in a call center you need to be patient in uh, probably answering all the questions and you need to communicate and speak well to make them understand your point or whatever is the valid point of the organization one need to be polite right because that's what a customer expects of a you know telemarketer or a call center explain the content basing on their requirement lot of interest along with patience absolutely so these are very very good points right so if if our strength is not patience if our strength is not um, good communication skills even if we are getting good money in that call center imagine the kind of stress that we will have every day right the customer is yelling at us and you know we are losing patience we could very well spurt out something that could impact our job and you know our reputation or we are constantly holding it within us and therefore it adds a lot of stress on us right similarly we can pick up other jobs as well so for example i am picking up examples that are easy for anybody to understand so let's say um you are a um you are a marketing person okay you are a sales person you are selling pharmaceutical goods to doctors right so uh what are the few things that could happen in this job you may have to travel a lot right you may have to travel a lot 
you may have to wait in front of the doctor's uh, cabins a long time because doctors obviously should prioritize you know treating the patients once that is done then only they can look at a you know a, a pharma sales person um, you know then only they can give time to the pharma sales person right and then you need to be technically strong with uh, the products right uh, so we, we need to have some background of uh, you know chemistry or uh, pharma pharmacy so to speak right so those are the type of skills right they need to be they need to have patience they need to wait they need to be okay to travel a lot some of us may not be comfortable traveling a lot right so every job has certain uh, every job has certain expectations from the candidate right and we have to figure out whether our strong points meet with those expectations right so if you are into an accounting job what is expected of you as an accountant they expect you to have a detailed orientation they expect you to understand the compliance norms well right they expect you to have an ability to solve problems they expect you to present numbers effectively analyze numbers well etc right so we need to figure out whether we have those strengths within us or not last two items uh, uh, talents all of us have certain um, innate talents within us certain innate skills for example some of us are very creative right um, these days there are jobs like content writers right jobs like designers um, ui ux designing and what not so some people who have a creative flair could uh, fit those jobs better than others right so our innate natural talents also um, have to be considered when we pick up a job if if our innate talents meet with what is uh, being offered i think you you're going to have a um, uh, a joyous ride uh, in your career uh, uh, as against if you do not uh, if if the requirements do not meet your talents etc last but not least is your attitude right um, how do you attitude simply defined is how do you react to a certain situation right let us say there are 10 people who failed in an exam doesn't necessarily mean that all 10 people will react to the failure the same way some people will say no problem let me do better next time some people will say they'll crib that the exam itself was wrong right some people will just ignore it so there are different ways we react to certain thing which is called our attitude right and every job needs us to uh, you know maintain a certain attitude ideally everywhere we should have a positive attitude right uh, but let's face it let's face it we all are a different people and we may have different attitudes based on our background based on of our life instances incidents in our life etc etc so we should never we should never compare people and call good or bad but what i'm trying to say is your attitude uh, you know is a very important factor for you to figure out what type of job choices or career choices you are going to make so this is the simple model look at your value system are you interested in something are your strengths match with this job do you have any innate talent or you know talent that you developed over time which you can effectively utilize in the job or not and last but not least well, how's your attitude and how how does that uh, you know affect this particular job role one point very clear is when we are making a career choice it is not necessary that all the five aspects match right it may not happen but we should always see uh, how many of these fit well in a job opportunity or how many of these fit well in a career opportunity the higher the number the better for us in uh, you know moving forward with the job opportunity now this is a topic so let's spend a few minutes uh, on this these are the you know uh, sought after so to speak areas where finance and accounting professionals can um, uh, be very successful right obviously the most common area we all get into is accounting and taxation right small medium large 
all sorts of organizations need accounting to be handled for their organization bookkeeping uh, putting together the financial statements including cash flow uh, you know uh, your uh, ability to generate mis reporting out of it your ability to analyze numbers and coming up with insights all of that um, you know is part of the accounting jobs that we have today only one um, one point that i would share here is uh, within accounting jobs there is a lot of technology usage right now right so uh, there are visualization tools such as tableau such as power bi right um, i think if if you haven't heard about this i think you need to know this you need to if you want to build a career in accounting i want you to consider uh, learning some fundamentals about what is the what are these data visualization tools right what are these um um you know uh, tools like tableau or power bi etc what are these tools what do they do okay in simple sense there is a lot of data today correct there is there is a huge amount of data that we deal with even uh, you know from an accounting standpoint and uh, we need to present summary of data to management we can't present everything right so for example there are 10000 sales transactions made by the company in the last one month we can't present the entire 10000 sales transaction to the management and say you scroll through this this is our sales data so we prepare certain reports out of it correct we put together reports that may be a comparison with a budget right a uh, comparison with an estimate a, a sales data by region a sales data by different products uh, sales that shows pipeline the actual etc so on so forth so there are a lot of reports that we can churn out of the sales data one way is summarize those numbers into easily understandable numbers but the other thing is put them into graphs right because a graph can speak lot more or to, it could connect with people lot better than a bunch of numbers right in our mind sometimes when we see numbers it may not be easy for us to make some inferences or make some conclusions whereas if i see a graph i think it becomes so easy a very very quick example um when we when we watch a cricket match right look at the type of graphics that are presented to us there is something called a wagon wheel on which side did the cricketer hit his runs where did he get more boundaries if it is a six they will actually show a, a an arrow which is curving up like this and crossing the boundary right it's a nice graphical representation of where he or she got runs right similarly a lot of graphs are presented when you know a cricket match is uh, you know is being played which is very easy for a very um, you know a non accounting person or a non number uh, person also to easily relate because that visual itself will uh, tell things to us that visual itself will say okay this is what it is right so that is what is data visualization in accounting also we provide graphs we provide charts graphs could be bar graphs or you know a pie chart or uh, you know any other uh, waterfall graph or any other graph so there are good tools such as tableau such as power bi such as n printing and there are so many other tools where you can easily create these visuals you can easily create most effective visuals for uh, you know uh, a particular data uh, point that is being analyzed now one thing to note also is some of these tools are real time which means if i pass an entry in my finance now the next minute the, the reports automatically get next second i should say the reports automatically get updated so that's the real timeness also which is brought in by some of these technology tools so if you are considering accounting i want you to uh, the olden world of uh, trying to learn is first we used to learn tally as an erp now we are moving forward and saying we will learn sap or oracle right because those are the most commonly used 
ERPs. But remember, this is still user experience. You're still doing accounting job using different functionalities of the uh, programs. Uh, but analysis can happen, you know, using the right data visualization tools or using the right um, uh, um, interfaces that can generate the right reporting. The other the area that, um, you know, is taxation. And here I would like to say one thing, if you're all uh, accounting professionals, uh, GST has been a great opportunity for all accounting professionals, right? It's a fairly new um, um, uh, taxation policy that has been introduced, I think five, five, five and a half years. Um, so really, strictly speaking, uh, even though there are experts, but it's not like there are a huge number of experts because the duration in, in which this has existed is only very short. So you still have an opportunity to, um, you know, play a role, uh, especially in GST. So there are huge opportunities with, in GST because um, many businesses which were not covered into these indirect taxation or which were not compliant to indirect taxation in the past are now, uh, you know, uh, are now registered under GST. So the need for uh, GST compliances and the need for record keeping as per GST, the need for uh, making the returns, etc., as per the GST have increased. If you step down your house, uh, move left or right towards shops, most of the shops, stores, supermarkets, everyone has to now follow the GST procedures, right? Most of them. So there is opportunity lying everywhere. And all the professional taxation experts today are not able to cater all the companies, especially the small ones, the micro and small ones. So you have a great opportunity to build a career in taxation. Uh, typically, a chartered accountant, cost accountant um, have used to uh, get involved in taxation aspects a lot. But nowadays, normal graduates with simple accounting degrees, uh, they gain expertise in taxation and they start pursuing careers in taxation. And I think, um, you know, that they're making very good careers out of that opportunity. So that's the very core of uh, area where, uh, you know, we all uh, get involved. The second area is banking, right? Uh, banking, number one, I think, number one, the banking industry has grown. There are uh, huge uh, banks as compared to a decade or two decades ago, right? There are a number of private banks operating in huge scales. Um, they have reached every nook and corner of the country. There are banks even in very small towns. And now, Technology has also changed how banks operate, right? Uh, there are ATM centers in the nook and corner, uh, one for every half a mile or, uh, you know, even less than that if you're in a city, once for every two, three kilometers if you're in a rural area or maybe five kilometers or so if you're in a rural area. So there are ATM centers everywhere. And now there is this, uh, you know, digitalization of banking transactions. We use Paytm, we use GPay, or we use other uh, forms of making transactions. So the way banking is, is done has changed. So what it also means that for an accountant, um, you know, there are opportunities in banking, but if you're able to couple that with technology skills that are required in the banking industry, I think that makes a huge career opportunity, right? Um, a sidebar here is an area called cryptocurrency. I know there is, it's a little bit tricky, um, you know, from a from an investment standpoint, there are there are a lot of aspects that we need to consider. It's a different subject altogether, but that's also an area where, uh, you know, um, there are uh, opportunities for people to build their careers. Another aspect of banking, um, most of you, I'm assuming that you're in Hyderabad or you're in Telangana. In, in Hyderabad, there are a number of, um, you know, international banks which operate their back-end banking services, right? Uh, so we have our, our own Indian banks like ICICI, HDFC, SBI, et cetera. But there are international banks, uh, HSBC, right? Uh, or let us say Royal Bank of Scotland or State Street Bank. So, uh, and so on. There are many, many banks uh, which are operating out of India. They run their shared services in India. So 
if we are able to learn certain uh, transaction processing activity of these banks so the way they process their loans or way they process a new account the way they handle their mutual funds and within that there will be many sub processes so if we are able to learn those banking has um, huge opportunities in multinational banking companies also very similar is uh, you know insurance both uh, india as well as uh, international insurance companies that are operating out of india um, there are uh, huge opportunities uh, in that field as well one thing that i would like to say here is still huge portion of india is not covered either in personal insurances medical or health insurances um, etc huge uh, population is still not covered which means this this industry within india will continue to grow as the awareness of insurance as the benefits of insurance are known by people i think there will continue to be a surge in the um, customer um, uh, customers uh, entering into uh, you know the insurance sector um, over the next 5 uh, to 10 years as well so there there will be a lot of opportunities in this and then there are new products coming up here again we cannot do away with technology guys now buying insurance is so different than buying insurance years ago you have to go to an insurance broker buy an insurance wait for the receipt wait for the insurance policy now it's not like that i think past few years many of us may be buying an insurance policy online these insurance companies nowadays even compare various policies and show, show you which one is the best right that that was not a possibility in the past so we have technology that allows us to make that comparison allows us to figure out what is the right thing etc um so insurance companies also have um you know a huge uh, burden in terms of how do they how do they package their products better because the comparisons are literally available uh, uh, along with the financial comparison along with the benefit comparison etc so how do you package your products etc becomes key capital markets continue to be a great opportunity for uh, accounting professionals we understand the numbers better than others uh, so to speak so um, capital markets continue to grow uh, again there's a, there's a lot of scope for indian um, indians to continue to put their monies into the capital market still still the participation levels are far far lower as compared to the western world um, now nowadays we are seeing a lot of startups slowly moving away from their own internal um, from their own uh, uh, angel funding or vc funding and eventually getting into ipos right uh, startups which typically start as a private limited company gets into public uh, with the ipo and then gets into the capital market so um, there the, the lot of companies also um, getting into the capital markets there are a lot of uh, customers that are getting into capital market as investors um, and uh, they need they need um, help with analysis of information there are so many stocks uh, understanding the trends understanding uh, you know what is going on in the different industries and providing those insights to the customers etc uh, continues to be a great uh, area and and then there are a lot of uh, other behind the scenes activity within capital markets uh, where accounting professionals can still play a role i will not spend a lot of time on chartered accountancy cost accountancy and company secretary as such uh, but if you have pursued a basic degree in your accounting a professional degree could be one of these three right you could get into becoming a professional chartered accountant a professional cost and management accountant or company secretary by and large uh, the areas of study may be very similar but the subjects where you specialize would be different so for example in chartered accountancy uh, you know your areas of specialization could be accounting audit and taxation right um, uh, and uh, if you are a cost and management accountant your areas of specialization could be cost accounting uh, management accounting financial management etc not that chartered accountants cannot pursue those um, uh but i think there is a, there is an element of specialization not that company secretaries cannot pursue but i'm again repeating the same thing um uh, it's an element of specialization company secretaries typically handle the secretarial activities in the company so if you are if you are a a private limited company a simple example is 
you have to have your board meetings quarterly you have to have certain mca compliances you have to have an annual general meeting if you're a public company these compliances increase if you're a listed company there are far more um, you know compliances and uh, um, uh, compliances with the mca and other activities that you need to take care so company secretaries handle uh, those elements so these three are uh, they are not jobs as such, but if you want to pursue your career further into certain specialization, I think these are the three uh, broad areas that one can get into. And uh, actuarial consulting has, uh, you know, uh, grown significantly in the past few years, and uh, it will continue to grow um, uh, over time. But you should have a flair for, uh, you know, actuarial consulting. If you should have a flair for um you know uh, crunching crunching numbers if you if you will if you would like to get into actuarial consulting um i know we are uh, very close so i think we should have some time for questions so let me try to wrap it up very quickly some of the skills that are in demand um based on some surveys i i, I don't have references here possibly i can share them separately these are um, the in demand skills uh, uh, where finance professionals or accounting professionals uh, are expected to uh, 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 is being expected of finance and accounting professionals, I, sh I should say. Um, analysis as such, um, there is no more, um, even though there is this thing called accounting showing up there, but there is a huge shift from accounting to reporting and analysis, right? Management reporting and analysis. Even though accounting is listed here, still accounting jobs are in demand there is no doubt about it but if you want to move to higher paying jobs that means you have to get into management reporting you have to get into analysis because a lot of accounting has now become mechanized it's streamlined or mechanized or both right um, so it's easy for accounting transactions to be recorded these days it is easy for uh, summaries being generated very easily in fact a big element of management reporting and financial analysis is being taken care of by some of the tools. I talked about Tableau and the Power BI. They do a very good job in terms of analyzing the existing numbers itself, right? Uh, so um, put differently, I think uh, the amount of human intelligence that can be brought in in these areas of accounting, reporting, and analysis plays an important role. If um, if we are trying to do some calculations and computations as part of these roles, uh, what I can tell you is the computers are handling them. The technology is handling them, right? It's the analytical views. It is a perspective, uh, you know, is what is expected out of accounting or finance professionals, which we need to bring to the table, right? I think that, that plays a very important role rather than uh, transaction processing per se. Um, project management is another area because, um, you know, how organizations are operating uh, is changing every day. They are evolving. Uh, many organizations have gone, gone through a transformational change um, in the past few years. And uh, whenever there is uh, a change taking place, everything is organized as a project for us to successfully move to uh, or handle the change, right? So uh, project management skills are expected out of uh, accounting finance professionals as well, um, especially you're implementing a new technology um, and, and technology is changing every day, right? Uh, even if you, for example, even if a company is got into, let's say a big ERP such as SAP, there are constant upgrades to make it even more effective. There are constant uh, add-on tools to make them more, uh, the analysis more effective, et cetera. So one needs to constantly run certain projects to successfully make these changes to take place, right? And project management obviously can be applied in multiple other areas. I'm trying to relate to some finance areas here. So uh, that's a sought after skill uh, in the market. And obviously data analytics is the most sought after skill among what is listed here. Um, um, and when we say data analytics, it is different than data analysis, right? We need to uh, make that distinction. So um, there are various aspects that data analytics can bring in, right? Not only dealing with huge data, 
um, not only creating certain descriptive analysis out of it. There are so much of uh, descriptive, prescriptive. There's so much of predictive um, analytics that is being made today, right? So the analysis analytics has gone to the next level, uh, so to speak, with the use of technology, with the use of certain statistical tools, etc. So that's a great area, but it's a specialization that needs a lot of effort for you. Um, uh, you may have to learn a little bit of statistics. You may have to learn the tools that are being used for data analytics. Um, you may have to learn a little bit of programming. So for example, many people today pursue a career in R or Python, right? Um, so that means that you, you, know, you have to do a little bit of uh, technology uh, upskilling for yourself or programming upskilling for yourself if you have to be successful in these areas. So um, I know we have very few minutes left. Um, I will turn it back to uh, Prakash, sir. Uh, Prakash ji, um, if there is anything that you would like to add, uh, please go ahead. And uh, probably we can use these last few minutes for any questions that the students might have. Yes. The students, you can unmute the mics and then if you have any query, you can ask it. If you are not want? comfortable asking it out, yeah, you can use the chat box. Yeah, yeah. Other you, you can use the chat box also. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, hello. Sir. Appears there. Uh, hello. Not having, yeah. Uh, hello. Sir, sir good sir, morning, sir. Were, you were already, yes, please. Yes, sir. Myself, Ravchandra, sir. Yeah, okay. Speak. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, recently I heard about uh, uh, regarding the uh, business analytics, I mean, uh, uh, business uh, analyst and finance analyst. Uh, can you describe, I think, I think what is the uh, current opportunities regarding that or it is a great skill to commerce people also. Yeah, just now we have talked about something called data analytics, right? Okay, uh, so uh, uh, pretty similar terminology used uh, is business analytics, right? Um, where data is analyzed, huge amounts of data is analyzed using certain tools and certain functionalities that are developed. Uh, within these tools, right? At the end of the day, the idea is to improve decision making only, right? Just the way we do in financial analysis for improving decision making. There is business analytics um, where uh, we use certain tools for decision making. Let me do one thing. Let me quickly grab a slide to show you what I mean by that. Okay, let me know once you're able to see the screen, I will tell you what are the areas, okay? How the analytics is changing over a period of time. Probably I'll try to share it very quickly. Hopefully it will help. Oh, very limited time. Let me know once you're able to see the screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, Andy, you can see the screen. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes, sir. So see analytics how, journey. Yeah. how the analytics has changed over a period of time. This is a slide I presented elsewhere, so I just grabbed it. So in the old world, analytics used to tell us what has happened in the past, the historical numbers. That is why it used to be called descriptive analytics, right? From there, we have moved to predictive analytics, which is what will happen right, in the future. And then there is a move towards prescriptive analytics, which means um, what do we do with what will happen? Okay, we have predicted what will happen. So how do we get prepared for it? And how do we make the most out of what could happen in the future? Okay. And we are at a stage of cognitive analytics where um, uh, how do we have certain automated uh, responsiveness to whatever next big change that takes place? Okay, so 
what i'm trying to tell here is the the analysis uh, uh, the level at which analysis is being provided to decision makers has changed substantially right from historical all the way it is going to future that to automated that to very quick that to prescribing some things etc so all of this is possible with a certain level of technology uh, you know integration it is not possible um, humanly because of the amount of data that we have um, so they they create certain algorithms to predict certain aspects of future um, and we can use these tools i mean that's in the background but we can use these tools to effectively uh make some predictions make some uh, adjustments to our strategy of the future based on that so long story short huge opportunity it's a huge opportunity undoubtedly uh, in fact this is sort of the in thing the next 5 10 years business analytics will be a huge area but it means that you should also invest time in learning some of these analytics tools to be able to pursue a career right i gave you some simple examples like in visualization i talked about tableau and power bi those are easily understandable relatable for finance professionals in programming the basic ones i told you r and python right you can pick up those and you know start I, i what i would suggest is you don't have to join some courses for this spend half hour one hour pick up some youtube videos on these courses and see what it means if you really passionate about it then pursue it as a you know paid program or course from somewhere you don't have to spend money at the beginning just get the feeler test waters and then figure out whether it is the right thing for you yes sir so now you have a uh, thank you sir uh, the time is up uh, hello sure sir sure sir please go yeah, on sir please for one minute one one minute sir one minute all the students uh, you have now uh, hope you have got the full information and the speaker has covered everything about the accounts and finance and uh, uh, he's this more than it all because he talked about the analytics and then the future like a part of the artificial intelligence also he's going i mean like a slightly touch so the future avenues so he covered it and from a to z you can see that how to uh which job you you like he he talked about the vista so those are all the points actually applicable to him he is now he has prepared so much and he he, he has given this one hour training program it is a this million dollars program what we call it as all the students i all the participants i request you to unmute the mics and please give him a big hand and let us say our thanks to him please all of you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you. you very much sir it's a thank pleasure you so much, sir. You can, thank you sir thank you you can stay in touch through linkedin i think we can always have continue to have conversations on careers etc uh through linkedin you can find me as vijay kiran agastya yes yes thank you thank you sir one and all okay thank you good day happy sunday thank you should be sent to you sir thank you professor